As we head into the home stretch of 2024, it is becoming very obvious that the Bay Area housing market is trending in a particular direction. But what do these trends mean for you as a home buyer or as a home seller in the Bay Area? Coming up on this Silicon Valley snapshot. There are a lot of things that are very uncertain right now. The economy, the political climate, the geopolitical climate. But there is one thing that is certain, and that is the direction that the Bay Area housing market is headed in. And we're going to get into that data. But before we do that, before we get into the numbers, if you are a home buyer in today's marketplace and you're trying to assess your situation, does it make sense for me to buy now? Does it make sense for me to buy later? If I'm buying in a particular area, how much should I be offering on any given property? What are the comparables look like? What is the data telling me to do in this particular area? You can text the word consultation plus the area or the neighborhood or the zip code that you're looking in. And I will personally reach out to do a 20 minute Zoom no obligation, no strings attached, just to learn more about your situation and really help put you on the path to success. Same thing goes if you're a home seller. If you're a home sell seller in today's environment, it might not be the right time for you to sell, or it might be advantageous for you to prepare your home for sale, fit, say for spring of next year. And so there's a lot of nuance, especially when it comes to selling your home more so than buying your home and really trying to time the market effectively and appropriately. And when you have all the data, when, when you have as much data as I do, when you have as much insight and experience as I do, it becomes easier to predict timing, marketing strategy, pricing strategy, all of that will be covered when you text the word consultation plus your property address to the number down below. I will personally reach out to you. 20 minutes, no obligation, no strings attached. Learn more about your situation and help put you on that path to success. All right, so let's get the data moved over here and I'm going to move my screen to where I can actually see the data. So let's dive into the numbers and the data up here. Uh, in October now, we have all of the September data now available to us. And we'll start with Santa Clara County. Uh, looking at uh, the numbers for September, we saw a, a pretty big increase in inventory levels. We went from 1161 in August to 1307. So 1,307 homes on the market versus 904 homes pending. Now, this is a little surprising to me. Uh, I've got to be honest with you because a lot of times coming out of spring break or not spring break, summer vacation, a lot of times after August, we, sit, we tend to see a little bit of an uptick in demand. Now, obviously last year didn't follow suit. So last year we saw demand drop, pending sales drop a little bit from August to September. And it looks like that trend continued in 2024. We saw a slight dip in demand, 944 homes pending in August to 904 homes pending in September. Uh, but the bigger surprise was the sharp increase in Santa Clara County in terms of inventory levels. Now we would expect to see these inventory levels rise again in October, because typically we see a rise in September, October, but not this big of a rise. And we tend to see pending activity follow alongside of it. So very rarely do we have a situation in the fall where pendings and inventory levels diverge even more in the fall. We tend to see those lines come closer together. So very interesting trend here in Santa Clara County, and it follows suit in San Mateo County. Definitely not as drastically on the pending side of things. We have 373 homes pending versus 650 homes active, but look at the increase in inventory levels from August to September. This is a little unusual to see such a big increase in inventory levels coming out of the summer market but not unlike 2023. So this might be an emerging trend here in the Bay Area where we tend to see inventory levels spike after the summer break. And typically we, we tend to see inventory levels spike during the summer. And so this is a very interesting, I would say, emerging trend in the Bay Area, specifically the peninsula. And uh, the buck doesn't stop there though. The, the hits keep on coming as we roll into the East Bay, Contra Costa County, we have 1,489 homes active on the market versus uh, 722 homes pending. Now, we saw a slight dip in pending activity from 772 to 722 in Contra Costa County. And again, 1,372 inventory uh, levels, homes on the market in August to 1,489. So again, we're starting to see that uptick in inventory levels, divergence from pending sales to inventory levels. And uh, if we look, say at August to September of last year, we see the same trend. So uh, again, this is this is something that we saw last year based on on recent memory over like the last 10 years coming out of the summer. We didn't typically see a divergence. We tend to see a convergence. We, we saw more inventory being absorbed 
during the fall months. We'll see if that trend continues into October. But one thing is for certain, I can almost guarantee you that inventory levels will rise month over month into October. Flipping on over to Alameda County, a big increase in inventory levels from 1,238 homes to 1,488 homes and a very, very uh, almost a stable pending activity margin there where we have 750 homes pending in August versus 737 homes pending in September. Now, something to keep in mind here and something to really pay attention to is let's look at the pending activity levels in September of this year versus say August and September of last year, particularly August and September of this year versus August and September of last year. So in August and September, we had 768 homes pending, 670 homes pending. We have roughly, now this month, we might have a little bit more homes pending, like 60 more homes pending. So about a 10% increase in pending activity a uh, year over year from September to of uh, last year to September of this year. But we see almost a 50% jump in inventory level. And so this is a massive change in climate in just a short period of time. Weren't the interest rates supposed to help the real estate market? More on that in a second. Same thing in Contra Costa County. We saw, you know, 797, 693 homes uh, pending, 772 and 722. So about the same number of homes pending. And then again, boom, 30, 40, 50% increases in inventory levels year over year. We don't have the same situation in San Mateo County. County. Looking at this year versus last year, it's pretty much a wash in terms of absorption rate. And in Santa Clara County, it's almost a combination of the two. It's it's not quite as dramatic as the East Bay in terms of decrease in absorption rate, but we are still very much seeing a decrease in absorption rate in Santa Clara County. So what do we make of this data? Well, one thing is for certain, nothing's changing anytime soon. So between now and the end of the year, I believe that inventory levels and, and the current absorption rates that we're seeing will remain roughly where they're at right now or might even get a little bit softer. So the market between now and say December, January of next year, I think we're going to see very similar market conditions to the conditions that we're seeing right now. And uh, being on the front lines, having agents on my team that are servicing clients in the peninsula, in Santa Clara County, in the East Bay, I can tell you that what we're starting to see is an increase in homes that have been sitting on the market for over 10 to 14 days. In previous markets, it was quite rare to find a home in good condition that's been sitting on the market for say more than two weeks. But now we are starting to see days on market creep up ever so slightly. Now, the best home on the best streets with the best schools, with the golden toilets, those are still selling at a premium, you know, multiple offers on those houses, still going hundreds of thousands of dollars over list price, but that's because they are heavily desirable, backed by a great marketing strategy by a great agent, priced, aggressively by an agent who knows what they're doing. See, you got to have all three. You've got to have a great product. You've got to have great marketing and you've got to have a great pricing strategy. All three of those things come into play. And if you have all three of those, you're still going to sell for an incredibly high price if you're a seller. But if you're a buyer, now's the time to be setting your sights on something slightly different. If I were buying a home in today's market, I would not look at anything that's been on the market for less than 14 days. Instead, what I would do is I would have a filter set on whatever housing app you of your choosing, right? Whether it's Zillow, Redfin, or any of these other websites, I would have a filter set for anything that's been sitting up, that's been on the market, days on market, 14 or over, right? Just start there because right then and there, that's going to tell you there's going to be some flexibility on the price. Not only that, but the chances of you having to compete and, and throw away uh, contingencies like an inspection contingency or a financing contingency or an appraisal contingency and come in less protected is a lot lower. So chances are you're going to have more leverage in terms of price and more leverage in terms of terms. Say that five times fast. We're in this weird purgatory phase where rates are going to slowly start to come down but prices will not adjust as quickly as we might have anticipated. This could be due to a number of reasons. Reasons that I'm not going to get into on this particular edition of the snapshot. But the point remains that there are opportunities right now in the market as a buyer that did not exist even a couple of months ago. And that is due to the surging inventory levels. When there's more homes on the market and the same amount of demand, which is practically what you're seeing right here, right? Demand is going down ever so slightly and inventory levels are going up by 10, 20, 30, 40, 50%. So when demand is going down, 
5%, and inventory levels are going up 30 to 50%. I mean, you do the math. You're going to have a lot more opportunities to choose from. And as a buyer, you're going to have, on the whole, more leverage. There will always be exceptions to the rule. There's always going to be, like I said, the golden house with the golden toilets with the great schools and blah, 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 blah. But this is one of the better opportunities I've seen in a long time for home buyers. And this isn't going to last forever because eventually the increase in inventory levels will either die off or the rates will get to a point where the buyers are reinvited into the marketplace. The buyers that are sitting on the sidelines right now that have been really frustrated with the fact that like, my gosh, I thought there was going to be more flexibility in the price, but because there were no homes on the market, they were still getting outbid because there were multiple offers, even though they didn't think that there were going to be multiple offers. Now there are more opportunities. There's more flexibility. And if ever there was a time to dive into the market, it looks like the next three to four months are going to be a great window of time to take advantage and seize the opportunity in front of you. By the way, these are general data reports. If you're looking for a specific data report for either the area or the neighborhood or the zip code that you are buying or selling a home in, you can text the word data plus the area, neighborhood, zip code, or even the property address that you're interested in, and we will get that data report sent straight to your inbox. This is Danny Gould, everyone. I'm selling Silicon Valley, and I will catch all of you in the next video.